Actually, I'm going to change this to a numerical 3. Right? Okay. Okay. Then let's see. Just posting. Let's see. Okay. We are here. I don't know if things are too loud. Oh, here comes the cat. The cat. Can I grab the cat? No, I can't grab the cat. What are you doing on that? Stop it. What are you doing? Hello. Hello, Sean and Courtney. Glowworm is oh, oh I could do it I could do a kitty cam but I can't fuck <laughs> I really wish I had an extra webcam because she's actually not bunctious right now she's not rambunctious damn it well she's over here I wonder if I could show you for a fleeting moment there she is there is the cat. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> I'll just say that. Here, wait, I'm gonna tidy this up a bit. No, not quite. Oh, no, okay. Tidying up. Just a schmidge. Oh, no. Is it not on there? Wait, what? Well, I guess it is. Hello, Carl. Welcome. Kumat. I've never even seen that. Kumat Frog. Welcome. <laughs> I have my microwaved cup of coffee because I forgot about it on my desk. I feel a little more prepared because I have water replenished. And I have my coffee that is now hot, so I'll be inspired to drink it. And, I don't know if Tom's here, but I did bust into this camera. I So, I thought it was a C920, but it's really a C910. I just messed up the names. So, it took me so long to find a way to open up this one, because I just kept... I thought it was like an older model of a C920 or something. So, it just took me ages. But, I finally found some dude in like 2013 busting open the... <laughs> A C910, um, and I turned the little dial. So hopefully it'll be, I mean, you obviously will not be able to read. Um, you absolutely will not be able to read <laughs> what's in here. But, oh, I mean, you can, I mean, you can't read it, of course, but you can definitely see it way better. Just like the layout of the pages and stuff. Um, and then eventually we'll get, you know, up close, front and center, once I get the little gooseneck guy, and we'll be on our way. So, yeah. So I do have a, I also have another confession. I only did four pages yesterday and not five. So, <laughs> um, I'm a little behind. I'm a, I'm a little schmidgen behind. But it got me scared because I'm like, if I don't do, it just got me thinking about the timeline of this whole, like, this whole freaking charade so back-to-back -back streams yes well i think like i mean i don't know it's not like 
I don't want them to be too long. Like, I'm thinking around, like, two hours to an hour and a half or something like that. Yeah, it looks more crisp. Okay, sweet. Good, good, good. Also, I, I didn't really say hello. So, hello, Sean, Courtney, Carl, Anthony, Infinite Disgrace. Why do I use my real human face and not that of a VTuber? Maybe someday. Maybe someday I'll become a VTuber. <laughs> I would really like to be this guy. I want to be this guy, the VTuber. So, anyways. What was I saying? What was I... I do not remember what I was saying. Oh, just th about the timeline of, like, if I miss, like... Yes, thank you, Anthony. Like, if I miss, like... Because my calculations have been, like, on the daily. Like, if I stream for two hours every single day, like, it'll take 300... So, basically, 365 two-hour-long streams. But, obviously, I don't know, like, how, like, dispersed that'll be. Because even if I do every other day, which is still pretty intense, like, that's two years. But, I mean, I'm down. Also, there's something on my freaking mind Anyways, also yesterday I think I, I beat around the bush a little bit too much at the beginning, so I'm going to jump right in. Right now we're on page 10, um, and the last word here, this is a little, I think this is a little loud. I think that's better. I don't have any bushes to beat. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Cheer 50! <laughs> I don't have... I don't even know... Is that... Are Cheers bits? I don't know anything about, like, the streamer side of of Twitch. <laughs> but... Cheers are bits. Okay. Because I don't think any Joe Schmo streamer can... Um, can have, like, bit ability. Yeah, I guess they're affiliate. I don't even know how to get to affiliate. But, anyways, also, people are here, so I do want to show temporary cat cam. Glowworm cam. Also confirmed you can apply to affiliate at 50 followers. Oh, so we're not that far. We're like 15 away or something like that. But, yes, that is cat. I really just need, I really need to find... I do have another... I actually haven't tried that webcam on on the computer. Uh, it's almost worth trying right now. Where is it? This frickin' thing that I found. I was visiting... I was visiting my partner in Ithaca, and um, I got this guy. <laughs> at uh at a thrift store and i've got it to work on like my really old thinkpad but i haven't gotten it to work on like any newer machines but i feel like there still is a way i just need to figure it out but maybe that could be cat cam oh gray hello gray street fighter 3 third strike fight for the future in the dictionary yeah it is pretty scary but it's cool because it does have like a little focus ring and stuff it looks so neat <laughs> um Honestly, I would not be surprised, because I think, like, this, the thing that's cool about this dictionary is, like, it has a lot of, like, cultural references in it, because it's all about, like, the evolution of language, and, like, kind of, like, very, like, niche things, or words, or abbreviations, or movements, or companies, or whatever, being inducted. So, it is possible. It is very, very possible. But, I hope everyone's doing well today today i won't beat around the bush i know i'm sorry <laughs> oh thank you gray <laughs> yeah it's slowly been accruing so i also changed the color of this uh it used to just be boring yesterday but i think this is a bit better um yeah hopefully coffee cam will be like an actual reality someday um but yeah thank you i'm honored I'm honored to hear that. <laughs> um, anyways, you're right. No more bushes to beat. We got to get into it. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear. No, you guys can't. I'm 
I look at me. I'm beating around bushes. I gotta just get into it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sponsored by. Oh, that's such a good idea. If I were to make this here, hold on. This is the last bush I'm gonna beat. I just want to plug this in and see if it just immediately works. I'm too curious. It's definitely not going to, I should say. But we do be beating bushes. It's true. Oh. We did get the Baba do beep. Bagungi. Hello, Bagungi. We are beating bushes. Let me see if... Is it installing drivers or anything? No. Okay, let's see if I can add a video capture device. Let me add a source. Let me add a new source instead. Let me call it sponsored by Intel. No, it's not there. I probably have to find some like drivers or something, but I tried finding them before and it just didn't like it didn't exist. Or I mean they existed, but they don't work with uh um they don't work with Windows 10 for some reason, but I don't know. I feel like there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. Yeah, we got some Again, I, I don't know if people yesterday saw, but I do have some better TTV and Franker Face Z emotes fresh off the grill for use, including sad. <laughs> Set up Game Boy cameras as webcams for Zoom. Yeah, like I feel like there definitely is a like there's gotta be a way. If and if that if there is a way, then maybe um Maybe I have to do some, like, actual, like, surgery on this webcam, like I did this guy. I mean, I didn't really do surgery on this guy, but, you know. Oh, does that work? I didn't even know that was a command. Or no. Um. Wait, is it a command? Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know how to, like... Like... Yeah, we gotta let- there's so many Pepe's. I really didn't want that many Pepe's, but they're also good. Like, <laughs> and they're they're just like the most like populous on like Better TTV and Frank Facey. But I don't know, they're so expressive. I love them. I really like this one. I don't know when it will be used, but people learn and makes me very happy. Oh, you're so right, Gray. <laughs> Does wait, does Asher have it? I forget if he added it as a better TTV thing or was it only the I think it was only the Discord on the server. Yeah. <sighs> Tilt-top green boots would be so good. <laughs> but anyways, um yeah, no more bushes to beat. I don't see any bushes. All I see are words that we gotta read. So, let us begin. Oh, I didn't make a... Okay, I'll shut up, but I didn't make a little... I was gonna make a little title for this screen over here. So, it is time to get serious. So, here we go. So, we left off on account, which has a monstrous definition. Um, that honestly has, like... A, like... All of these are like idioms, like these are sayings, like by all accounts or for accounts of or in account with or leave out of account or on one's own account or put to good account or settle accounts or square accounts, take into account, turn to good account. Like, I was so surprised at how many account idioms there were, <laughs> but I don't know. I didn't really take it in because I was like, my throat was losing hydration rapidly near the end so anyways we begin oh no okay so the next word is a courage or acreage or acarage 
a courage or acourage. In Spencer, it's a transitive verb meaning to encourage. The transitive verb a court means to entertain. An example, an invention of Spencer's from court. Oh, so it's also a, oh, that's not an example. That's some etym etymology, an invention of Spencer's from court. Then we have acout, acout, accouter, accouter, I guess. Yeah, accouter is a transitive verb. And there's also accoutered. I don't know why they're giving these at the, like, I feel like they put the derivations afterwards. Anyways, accouter, which means, it's a transitive verb, which means to dress or equip, especially a warrior. Settle in. Yes. Finally, Peepo Coffee. Is that Peepo Coffee? I don't even remember. That's Pepe Coffee. Yeah. Then we have... Oh, here are the derivations. So derivations include um, the obsolete nouns accouterment, uh, accoustrement, and... Acou oh, and another spelling of accoustrement. Um which just means equipping, and usually in plural, meaning dress or other items for a particular activity, uh, or military equipment apart from clothing and weapons. The transitive verb akoi is from Spencer, which means to still, to soothe, or to subdue. Oh, then there's a coiled that is spelled like A-C-C-O-Y-L-D, but for that I need to see a coil, which I think we pass. I think we did. Yeah, we did. Which is a rare noun for reception. A coiled. Or in this, uh, in the Spencerian. It, would it would it be Spencerian? Where accoutrements comes from? I don't even know what that. Oh, is accoutrements? Hello, Yasmin. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for following. Here, wait. Is accoutrements? That antiquated, though I feel like people use that in a whimsical, kind of ironic way, and usually with the French pronunciation. Yeah. Or U.S. Yeah, so there's like accoutrement, and then there's like accouterment, which is like, it says the U.S. spelling. Oh, thanks for following, Gray. Welcome. Um, but yeah, I guess it is... Oh, sorry. So I, I probably said it wrong, but um, the first two forms of accouterment, like accoutrement and accouterment... Um, in the American spelling, those aren't obsolete, but the spellings um, that use an S, like, uh, for example, those are obsolete. So those are like obsolete spellings. Yeah. I think I skimmed over that. My apologies. Because some of these are like, I don't want to spend too much time on, like, they have like the signifiers and stuff like that, and sometimes it's tedious, but yeah, that is weird. Accoustrament, and there's also like accoustrement, like that, which means it's and I'll just reiterate it is a noun for equipping, usually in plural, dress or other items for a particular activity, or a mil or military equipment apart from clothing and weapons. Um, but yeah, and I think we oh yeah we did a coy, we did a coiled, and now that brings us to the transitive verb a credit which means to bring into credit, show to be true or correct, to accept as true, to provide with or send with credentials, to certify as meeting official requirements, to attribute to, to ascribe to, with the thing attributed, to accept a student for university entrance on the basis of work done in school as opposed to an examination in New Zealand. Huh. And then there's... Uh, two derivations. There's the noun accreditation, right? Yeah, accreditation, and accredited, which is an adjective meaning provided with credentials, certified officially, accepted as valid, of livestock certified free from a particular disease, e.g. brucellosis. Huh. Brucellosis. Here, I actually want to see. So I realize that if I come across a word that's like, that I don't know, that's like within like a certain definition. I'm just gonna, I, I used to, I was making a list of things to go back to later on, but I figured that I might as well just look it up 
immediately. Brucellosis is a bacterial infection that spreads from animals to people. Most commonly, people are infected by eating raw or unpasteurized uh, dairy products. Sometimes the bacteria that cause brucellosis can spread through the air or through direct contact with infected animals. Whoa. That's interesting. It's like mad cow disease. Or something. <laughs> and I think that was the last, the last of the derivations. Which then leads us to the adjective a crescent, meaning growing, ever increasing, enlarged and persistent um, in botanical terms. Oh, and then that's it. God, I always get thrown off by the etymology. It just looks like more. But yeah, the botanical version is enlarged and persistent. Then uh, there are the derivations a crescence, which is a noun, a crete, which is an intransitive verb meaning to grow together, to become attached. And the transitive verb form of that is to unite, to form or gather round itself. That's really cool. A crete, to grow together, to become attached. And an accretion is a noun, meaning continued growth, especially as a result of a gradual accumulation of layers. The growing together of parts that are usually separate, something which has grown in such a way or an extraneous addition. The adjective, and then there's also the adjective accretive. Uh, there's also a compound word, uh, which is a noun called the accretion disk. And in astronomy, it means a flat disk formed by matter in orbit around a celestial body. Whoa. So I guess that would be what like just general rings are, like Saturn's rings. Would that be an accretion disk? Let's see. Accretion disk. Oh no, it's more like, it's a structure, often a circumstellar disk, formed by diffuse material in orbital motion around a massive central body. The central body is typically a star. Friction causes orbiting material in the disk to spiral inward towards the central body. I see. So it seems most attributed to, like, black holes. Whoa. That's fucking sick. I like that. Wait, that's the scientific term for a ring? It, it seems... No, it's like... It's the scientific term... It's like the astronomical term for, like, a ring of matter, I think, around a celestial body. But it's usually in the form of a flat disk. So... Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, it's spelled like... Okay, that's weird. I've noticed in this dictionary, they seem to use, like, a lot of... They spell a lot of words that seem to, like, in... Like, from what I know... Like, for example, skeptical. I think it's spelled with a K. Like, I've always spelled it with a K. But in this dictionary, they use C to spell skeptical. And same with disc. They didn't use a K, they used a C. So I wonder if there, like, is some, like, major difference. I guess there isn't. Wait, what the hell? Yeah, I guess it's just different spellings. Skepticism or skepticism. Huh. I wonder if there is a difference with disc. Disc versus disc. Disc with the C is seen more often in the music industry and throwable objects such as frisbees, whereas disc with a K is the preferred spelling in computer-related lingo such as floppy disk. Huh. People learning. Let's see. And then we have accrue, which is an intransitive verb. Um, in Spencer, it's spelled A-C-C-R-E-W. And it means to come as a natural result or development of something, or as an addition or product. Or it means to fall to someone by way of advantage. To fall due, to increase in Spencerian terms. And a transitive verb form in Spencer means to accumulate. And then there's a uh, derivation, which is a noun for accrual. Then there's uh, ACCT, which is an abbreviation for account which we went over yesterday. 
Yeah, I guess it is just like an arbitrary usage thing. I would... You know what? I found a bush to beat. Hold on. So I do have... Garner's Modern American Usage. Can you see that? And I'm pretty sure it would have something for disc. Here, let me actually just put this to the side. Oh no, I woke up glow one. I'm sorry! <laughs> Hello, partner. Welcome. I'm sorry you had to go through so many hurdles. I don't know why those hurdles are set up, but I sympathize. But welcome. Oh wait, no, I'm, I'm completely off. Disc, disc, disc. There we go, disc. Wait, you had to download Twitch on your computer? Can you even do that? Is there like a Twitch, like, program? <laughs> that sounds insane. What? <laughs> That's so stupid. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. Okay, so for disc with a C. Okay, we do have disc. So... Yeah, that's terrible. It's true. Jeff Bezos and his myriad insidious plots. <laughs> but I did... I did find stuff on disc. Oh, this is kind of, like, wonky, but... Okay, here. So, for American usage of disc, this is what, um... Who's the guy? Is it... Yeah, Brian Garner. This is what Brian A. Garner has to say about the usage of disc. So, disc and disc, both K and C. Disc with a K is the more usual spelling. Disc with a C is the spelling used in four senses. One, a phonograph record. Two, an optical disc, as an audio compact disc or video disc. Three, a tool making up part of a plow. And four, a component of a brake system. Otherwise, disc with a K is the preferred spelling for general reference to thin circular objects, Inverte in invertebral discs, celestial bodies, and computer discs. And then there's a little subsection that talks about diskettes, which is a, with a K. So a diskette, both diskette and disc may refer to computer data storage media. Disc with a K may mean one, the computer, the computer's permanently installed hard drive, Two, a compact disc that contains it that contains a program, data, or music, though this is better known as CD. Or three, the small flat portable magnetic medium. Diskette always bears this last sense: the small flat portable magnetic medium. The synonym floppy disk is declining in use, probably because the cases that hold discs are no longer floppy. <laughs> disc is commoner and shorter, but neither form can be fairly criticized. So there you go. Diskette is the gal version. Diskettes are for gals. Any gals in the chat? <laughs> Anyways. I want to refer to this more often because I think this adds a lot of, you know, pizzazz to these words. So if anyone is ever interested, <laughs> if anyone's ever interested in usage of some kind of word, Holler at me. Throw me a little at in the chat. You know, one of these ats. So, anyways. <laughs> the next word we have is accubation, which is a noun meaning a lying or reclining on a couch. Huh. <laughs> I kind of like that. I want to save that. Accubation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now there's acculturation, which is a noun meaning the process or result of assimilating through continuous contact, 
features such as customs, beliefs, etc. of another culture. The adjective acultural and the transitive verb and intransitive verb acculturate are both derivations of acculturation. Gray do be accubating. <laughs> That's such a good word. I don't know why that isn't... What, when is that even... You, I'm surprised that isn't, like, listed as, like, obsolete. That seems insane. Accubation. Okay, so it is rare. According to, like, uh, Wikishonary. Or Wiktionary. I always say Wikishonary, but Wiktionary. The actor habit of reclining at meals. Oh. The act or posture of reclining on a couch as practiced by the ancients at meals. Oh, so that adds a lot of context. Interesting. Here, I wonder if I could even show this. Those Greco-Roman hedonists. <laughs> Those dirty, filthy Epicureans. Oh, I can just drag and drop shit in here. That's so cool. Yeah, so this is, this is an accubation in the midst. If you were wondering. I wonder if I should keep this somewhere. No, probably not. I'll just delete it. Goodbye, accubation. Oh, shit. Window sound. <laughs> they used to eat so much they would throw up. <laughs> That's why they're sitting on their side. They go, Bleh! But anyways. Oh, no. I'm almost out of coffee. We'll take a coffee break sometime soon. But, anyways, we got done with the culturation, so now we're on to, actually I do want my, uh, want my pin to guide the wandering eye. Gray has thirst. Please attend to your thirst. Please, please, please. Um, we have accumbent, which is an adjective meaning lying down or reclining on a couch. What the... I'm surprised that wouldn't be a derivation of accubation. But the adjective accumbent, lying down or reclining on a couch, having the the radical or radical lying along the edges of the co cotyledons in botanical terms, and accumbency, which is a noun. Huh. So accubation and accumbent, lying down or reclining on a couch. It's literally the same word. What? So, like, an accubation is, like, a moment of accumbent. <laughs> I guess. Because it's the noun form. That's interesting. I like that. <laughs> and then next we have accumulate, which is a transitive verb meaning to heap or pile up to amass. The intransitive verb form means to increase greatly, to go on increasing, to take university, etc., degrees by accumulation, i.e., to take a higher degree at the same time as a lower, or at a shorter interval than usual, also transitive verb. And the adjective form means heaped up or amassed. So I guess Courtney would be would be accumulating, right? Because weren't you doing scholars program, which is like you're doing both lower, like, like undergrad and grad. So you'd be an accumulator or accum, but yeah, an accumulator. Yeah, the derivations are heaping up, uh, or sorry, the noun is accumulation, which means heaping up a heap or mass. The adjective accumulative, accumulative which means heaping up or growing by progressive addition. Cumulative, tending to accumulate acquisitive. The adverb accumulatively, the noun accumulativeness, and the noun accumulator, which is a thing or person that accumulates a means of storing energy, especially an electric body, or, a, or an electric battery that can be recharged by sending a reverse current through it. In a computer, etc., a device that performs a arithmetical would it be arith arith yeah arithmetical arithmetical yeah yeah i don't know why i'm stuck up on that operations and stores the results also accumulator bet 
a bet on at least two and usually four or more races with the original stake and winnings from each race being, by previous arrangement, laid on the next race so that the gambler either wins a large amount or loses all. Holy smoke. Wait, I want to... A bet on at least two and usually four or more races with the original stake and winnings from each race being, by previous arrangement, laid on the next race so that the gambler either wins a large amount or loses all. Interesting. That sounds fucking terrifying. <laughs> then there's accurate, which is an adjective meaning exact. Done carefully and precisely, lacking errors. And some two or three derivations include the noun accuracy, meaning correctness or exactness, and the adverbs accurately and the noun ac uh, accurateness. Then we have the transitive verb. Oh, I love this song. Wait, what is this song called? Yeah, Sweet Georgia Brown. Hell yeah. I hope you guys can hear this music. Hopefully it's not too quiet. Um, where are we? Oh, a curse. So, a curse is a... Okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh, we have the transitive verb, a curse, which means to curse. To condemn to misery or destruction. Then we have the adjectives accursed or the poetic term uh, accursed, which is like A-C-C-U-R-S-T, which is, which, which is an adjective which means subjected to a curse, doomed, worthy of a curse, and hated. And then there are the adverb, there's the adverb accursedly and the noun accursedness. Then we have accuse, which is a transitive verb meaning to bring a change against with of. The noun form in Shakespeare means an accusation. Then we have the, the derivations accusable, which is an adjective. Accusal, which is a noun meaning accusation. The noun accusation, which means the act of accusing a charge brought. Or, or a charge brought. The adjective accused, ac accusatival, 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 I guess so. And the adjective accusative, meaning accusing, in or belonging to a grammatical case which expresses the direct object of transitive verbs, primarily expressing destination or the goal of motion. Um, the noun form in grammar means the accusative case, a word in the accusative case. Then there's the adverb accusatively, the adjective accusatorial, which means of an accuser denoting a judicial procedure in which the judge is not the same person as the prosecutor. The adjective accusatory, meaning containing accusation. The noun accused or accused in singular or plural means the person or persons accused. It can also be an adjective. Um, accusement, the noun accusement in Spencer means a charge. The noun accuser, the adjective accusing, and the adverb accusingly. Then we have a custom, which is a transitive verb, meaning to make familiar by custom, with to. So like to accustom. And then also to habituate. The adjective accustomary and the adjective accustomed mean usual, frequent, habituated, in the habit. And then there's also the noun accustomed, accustomedness, accustomedness. <laughs> And then there's, oh, accoustrement. Oh, yeah, and that's what we, we went over that earlier. There's ACDC, AC slash DC, which is an abbreviation in electricity, meaning alternating current and direct current. And it's also an adjective. Uh, and also there's a slang form, which is an adjective meaning bisexual. I don't know why that's bisexual, but wait, I think it was off center. Is that a bit better? Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, I wonder why that is. I'm surprised they haven't even, like... They didn't say... ACDC. Why would that be? I am ACDC. <laughs> like, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think of... Here, I almost want to see. I want to... I want to see. ACDC bisexual term. Capable of being 
sexually aroused and satisfied by either sex. This slang term was coined by analogy to an electrical appliance which operates on either alternating current or direct current. Oh. That's a very specific, like, analog. <laughs> That's so weird. The female plugs and male plugs and shit. Sort of, yeah. I, like, I don't... I mean, I honestly don't know the difference between AC or DC. I don't know if anyone else knows. But, anyways. Then we have uh, ACE, which is an abbreviation for Advisory Center for Education, the Allied Command, or Allied Command Europe, and Gyotensin Converting Enzyme. Oh, God. Architects Council of Europe, Arts Council England, Association for the Conservation of Energy. And then there's a compound word, which is ACE inhibitor, which is a noun for a substance that interferes with the production of angiotensin converting enzyme used to treat high blood pressure, kidney disease, etc. And then there's the noun ACE, which means a unit, the one in dice cards, dominoes, etc. A single point, a winning serve, especially one which the opponent fails to touch in tennis. A hole-in-one in golf. A jot, a person of the highest character in Burns. A person of distinguished achievement, an expert originally an airman, which is informal. An informal adjective meaning of highest quality or outstanding. The transitive verb form meaning to serve an ace against an opponent in tennis. To play a hole in one stroke in golf. To pass an examination with the highest available mark uh, informal in America. To pass... Oh, I see. To pass an examination with the highest available mark. And then there are a few uh, idioms. So there's an ace up one sleeve or an ace in the hole, which means a decisive but hidden advantage hold all the aces, meaning to have all the advantages, be in a winning position, play one's ace, which means to use one's best weapon, resource, etc., within an ace of, which means within a hair's breadth of, or within, oh my god, within a hair's breadth of. Yeah. Then we have as, asia, asia, which is a prefix, or suffix, sorry. A plural noun suffix, which means, or which is used in names of zoological divisions, especially orders or classes. And there's a C, a C E, a C E, which is a plural noun suffix, which means, uh, or which is used in names of plant families. And then there's a cedia, which is a noun uh, meaning listlessness, torpor, or sloth. Acedia. Huh. So it's like a state of listlessness. Torpor or sloth. Acedia. Huh. And I think... Okay, yeah, that's good. And then we move on. So now we have... A cellular, which in biology is an adjective for not containing cells, not made up of cells... Then the adjective eccentric, which means lacking a center. Oh, like acentric. Oh, that's right. Okay, the APA says that. So, acentric. Then we have the suffix acious, meaning relating or related to, resembling, etc. Um, then we have a... Oh, there's a bunch of different ways to say this. Like, acephalus or acephalus or acephalus, which is an adjective meaning headless, without a ruler, leader, etc. in a figurative term, and lacking a syllable or syllables in the first foot in prosody. Lacking a syllable or syllables in the first foot. Huh. I like that. Without a ruler, leader, etc. Acephalus. I might want to put that down. I like that. Acephalus. Right? Yeah. Then we have ACER, an abbreviation for the Australian Council for Educational Research. 
and there's the noun Acer, meaning a plant of the maple genus Acer, which gives its name to the family Acer... Aceracee... 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 Aceracee? Yeah, Aceracee. And then there's the derivation Aceracious, which is an adjective. Then we have uh, Acerb, Acerb or Acerbic, which is an adjective meaning bitter and sour. Some definite or some derivations are the transitive verb acerbate, which means to embitter or irritate, and the adverb acerbically, and the noun acerbity. Then we have oh I don't should I bring this down a bit more when I'm looking down if I'm like right here oh you can't see shit sorry fellas that might be a bit better yeah that's a bit better um then we have the adjective aceros which means or acerus acerus wait what no that one is that it. Aceros. Okay, okay. Wait, I thought the... What would ooh be? Oh, it would just be double O. Okay. So, aceros is an adjective meaning chaffy, in, which is an obsolete term, um, or obsolete uh, definition. In botanical terms, it means needle-pointed. Aceros. Then we have the adjective as acerus, or acerus, meaning without horns, antennae, or tentacles. Then we have the adjective acervate, meaning heaped. And then there's acervately, acervately, and acervation, which are adverbs and nouns, respectively. Then we have uh, ace, acence, assessence, assessence, or assessency, which is a noun for souring or turning of milk. Assessant, uh, is a is the adjective derivation assessance huh from the latin assessir to sour from assere to be sour it gets me like, like i don't know like when is this i love this word i'm just wondering like i guess it's just like weird how some words have been like inducted because, like, when we talk about, like, milk, it's like, the milk got sour. As opposed to saying, the milk... The milk assessed. <laughs> or would that even be... Or the milk is assessant. I guess that's what you would say. The milk is assessant. I mean, it, it sounds, like, crazy to say, like... No, it is the same idea. I'm just wondering, like, why some, like, words, like catch on for like like this in yeah like like why didn't it become common to say because it obviously there obviously is a word for milk souring but we choose to say or I, I mean we don't choose to say but like we just have basically lived a life in english where we haven't used assessant or uh or assessants I don't know. I guess it just happens. <laughs> but it just makes me wonder, like, where those words are now. Like, where are they even used? Like, I, I think there's a... Is it the OED that has... What would it be? Assessance. That has a, like... Oh, man, this is, like, a kind of hard to find this <laughs> but there's a site that like kind of tracks like how often uh it's used or i mean i guess google kind of like just kind of like cobbles it from like miriam webster and stuff assessant medical definition or or just means slightly sour assessant does it have usage no it doesn't have usage it's like, I don't know, like, like, where is this word? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I think it's interesting. Here, let me check, uh, Wiktionary. The quality of being assessant. 
uh, the process of acidous fermentation, a moderate degree of sourness. Turning sour. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyways, sorry. Just a little thought of the noggin. But we'll continue. So we have now we have the noun a cecil a cecil a cecil fam a cecil fame a cecil fame k a cecil fame k which is a noun for an artificial sweetener 130 times sweeter than sugar. Whoa. A cecil fame k. That sounds so intimidating. <laughs> Sounds like some, like, secret, like, secret chemical or something. A Cecil Fame K. Then we have, um, a set or a seto, uh, combining form, uh, I'm not really sure what they mean by that, a, a, a combining form. I think there's 100 times sweeter than sugar. I'm gonna put a little, feels wow, man. <laughs> oh wait no I'm I'm all mixed up where am I going where am I what am I doing where would it be I mean, I guess it would just be combining form. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, I'm beating bushes. Combining form. I don't know what that means. Combining form. A linguistic element used in combination with another element to form a word. Example given Anglo-English uh, in Anglo-American or bio... Bio meaning life and biology. Oh, so... Or graphy meaning writing in biography. Linguistic element used in combination with another element to form a word. So it's just kind of like an element. Like, okay. I think I get it. <laughs> I think it's just like a glorified uh, suffix or prefix. But anyways. Uh, aset or aseto meaning denoting vinegar, uh, ascetic or acetic acid. Then there's the noun acetyl, meaning a liquid formed by oxidation of alcohol, etc. Any of a class of compounds of which this is the type. The noun acetaldehyde means a liquid of characteristic smell, acetic aldehyde. The noun acet acetamide means the, am the amide, the amide of acetic acid. The noun acetaminophen, acetaminophen, is the U.S. name for para, paracetamol, for paracetamol. The noun acetate means an ester of acetic acid, short form of acetate rayon, an artificial fiber made from cellulose acetate, or a piece of transparent film on which information, diagrams, etc. may be written for display by overhead uh, projector, etc. Acetate film... Film of low flammability, whose photographic emulsion is coated on cellulose acetate, also called non-flam film, or safety film. <laughs> I love non-flam film. Use acetate for screen printing. Nice. Wait, yeah. Artificial fiber made from cellulose acetate. Or short form of acetate rayon. That's super interesting. It's interesting, too, that it's used on film, like celluloid. But I love the term non-flam film. <laughs> I wonder if, here, maybe I should make another one of just, like... Or no, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. I can just put non-flam film on here. Non-flam film. I'll probably put that in. Little marks. 
similar to the texture of film. Yeah, I can imagine. It's, that's what it seems like. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, where were we? Oh, there's ascetic, which is an adjective meaning of... Wait, what? Of, of the nature... Or ascet... Wait, what? I think that's a typo. Ascetic meaning of the nature of or producing ascetic acid. CH3COOH, also known as ethanoic acid, or its diluted form, vinegar. Acetification is a noun, or is a noun derivation. And the transitive and intransitive uh, verbs acetify, which means to turn into vinegar. Uh, the noun acetone means the simplest of the ketones, any ketone. The adjective acetos means acidus. The adjective acidus means like or producing vinegar, sour. The noun acetyl means the radical, the radical CH3CO of acetic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid aspirin. Holy smokes. Where's Julian? <laughs> I wonder if Julian knows anything about these. Uh, acet acetyl, acetyl, Choline? Acetyl... Yeah, acetylcholine. Yeah, acetylcholine is a noun meaning a substance secreted at the ends of nerve fibers when they activate muscles. Acetyclo acetylcholine... As oh my god. Acetyclo acetylcholine esteras... Esteras. Acetylcholine esteras is a noun meaning an enzyme that breaks down... Acetylcholine, thought to be a factor in Alzheimer's disease. Whoa. The noun uh, acetylene is a gas, C2H2, produced from calcium carbide and water, used in welding, synth uh, synthesizing acetic acid, illumination, etc. Also ethene. And then lastly, the derivation acetylenic is an adjective. Whew. That, oh, that's what you use for acne. Salicylic acid is found in a an aspirin, essentially. Is it aspirin or apsirin? Aspirin? Wait, where did I read that? I'm losing my brain. Here, wait, silic. Oh yeah, aspirin. Yeah, yeah. The radical of acetic a acetyl is a noun for the radical of acetic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid aspirin. Huh. Should be aspirin. Yeah, oh, it's spelled like a, um, 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 um aspirin, like A-S-P-I-R-I-N. No, you're good. <laughs> I do need some water. Oh. Okay. No, 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 that's what I, I, I was confused for a sec, but no worries. Anyways, now we move on to less complicated words. You can crush aspirin and use it as a mask? Whoa. Is that like a preferred way of doing it? Or is it just like an, like an alternative? Because I will say like, just from like experience of like people in my family using like acne medication, it seems to just be like a freaking train wreck because i get that the a lot of the point is like it it tries to make the acne worse before it gets better but like i feel like it also just causes so much freaking damage you just get like the actual acid in a wash huh yeah i don't know that's interesting i've always been suspicious of all it does is strip the skin of sebum what is sebum that makes acne. Sebum. Sebum. Oh, an oily, wax, waxy substance produced by your body's sebaceous glands. It coats, moisturizes, and protects your skin. It also It's also the main ingredient in what you might think of as your body's natural oils. Oh. Oh, I see. So how does stripping... Hmm. <laughs> I'm glad, Courtney. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. How do you how do you know all this, Yasmin? 
This is a lot of information. Like... I don't know, like, because isn't... You want skin oil, right? Or it's an excess of sebum getting stuck in pores. No, I know, I know, but I mean, like... <laughs> You're pulling out the aspirin and the silis, the the salicylic acid, the the um, the acetyl, the acetyl, the acetic acid, acetyl salicylic acid aspirin. <laughs> I don't know. Blows my mind. But that's really cool though. The excess sebum and bacteria. And coat it with a moisturizer that doesn't clog your pores. I see. Gotcha. So why... So so what do, like, other acne medications, like, even do, then? Like, if that's just what salicylic acid does. Like, why get... Um... Oh my god, I'm forgetting all the, like, the, the acne medications right now. But yeah, like, what, because it's water-based rather than oil-based. Oh, all of them kind of do the same thing. So, acne medication is a scam, then. Sort of. Like, because I don't know, if you just get some aspirin, if you get just, like, you know, the stuff itself, why, you know, get on, like, it's just about stripping the skin's sebum and exfoliating dead skin cells to make the skin cell turn over faster. I see. Depends on what you're thinking about. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I'm just thinking of, like, there are just a lot of acne medications that are like, you need to go on this regimen, like, and I get the, like, the importance of, like, you know, making a regimen for, like, treating your skin and treating acne, but, like, I feel like what you're really buying is, like, the, like, I don't know, it's kind of like the brand name, more like, in that sense. Like, if, if you can actually, like, you know, do all of this without having to go through some kind of, like, these people don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that is just, like, what it comes down to. And they fuck up their skin with treatments that should be helping... Yeah. Yeah. Because they over exfoliate or over moisturize. Right. Yeah. Or use something with shit ingredients. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of, maybe I'm just biased, but the the anti acne medications just seem to be very suspicious to me. And don't wear sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It does seem like a very delicate product. Because, like, even with, like, the simplicity... Yeah. Like, with the simplicity of it, it almost seems like... That's almost the, the thing that makes it very, like, delicate, in a sense. Because if, like... If you have this acne medication that adds, like, some other things to, like like, help, like, accentuate those processes of, like, you know, replacing that excess oil with, like, something more, like, less harmful, then, like, it's very easy to, like, abuse, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I don't know, it's... Ugh. Skin treatment is scary. That's why you can't be popping your zits. You gotta let them live and die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I see people. Oh, I think I see someone I know. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. We do gotta get back to it. So, that was Aceto or Aceto. And then now we can go on to Acetabulum. Or Acetabulum? Yeah. Acetab, yeah, acetabu, no, ooh, a bit of <laughs> Acetabulum, which is a zoological noun, and the plural is acetabula, meaning the hollow that receives, the hollow that receives the head of the thigh bone. One of the uh, 
cotyledons of the placenta of ruminants, the cavity that receives a leg in the body of insects, acetabulum. Oh, in various invertebrates, a sucker. Ooh. I do want to see what the cotyledon, because I keep running into that. I want to figure out how to actually say it. Cotyledon. In a, an embryonic leaf in seed-bearing plants, one or more of which are the first leaves to appear from a germinating seed. Oh, so this is like this is like what I see in the the blackwood that's germinating. The the cada cada cotyledon cotyledon. That's how you say it. Cotyledon. Okay, that's good to know. Cotyledon. A cotyle so like it's it's like the first leaves that it, it, an embryonic leaf in seed bearing plants one or more of which are the first leaves to appear from a germinating seed so like like this is literally like what my um oh where did it go did it not work where is it oh no Can I do this oh my god okay okay like these it's just like the first. Yeah, I guess, but I guess, like, the botanical term is cotyledon. These are the cotyledons. That's pretty cool. Sprout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I mean, I imagine it would just be... Comparison of a monocot and dicot sprouting. The visible part... So what would I... Oh, what the hell? Oh, no. Melt banana. No. No. <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, like, what would the... What's a... What's a sprout, then? No, not sprouts. God damn. Put forth shoots. Is the natural process by which seeds or spores germinate and put out shoots and already established plants produce new leaves or buds or other newly developing parts experience further growth hmm hmm yeah i don't know i think cotyledon just seems to be like the more like accurate like this is what this is and like sprout is like more of a product of sprouting but, anyways. Oh, window sound incoming. Okay. <laughs> How are my sprouts? I think they're good. I Oh, I checked the other day. They are doing good. It's getting, like, really, really mossy in there. So I'm gonna have to, like, transfer them into a pot, I think. The other ones that I did plant ended up dying. But they weren't as, like... They seemed to be, like, a false alarm. Like, they were kind of like a, like a, like a fake sprout. Or cotyledon. I don't know. It, it seemed like it was just kind of one. It was like a stray one and it just didn't really do much. Um, but the ones that are in the tub right now are like, they're like, I don't know. They look more cotyledonic, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It might have been too cold. I, I mean, it was also like before, like I, I ended up being gone for a little bit too so like it might have been a little bit of that as well but i don't know anyways we gotta continue so we did a, a cetabellum acetabellum acetabellum or acetabulum acetabulum yeah and then the the derivation adjective uh aceta acetabular oh no i think i said that okay then we have uh acgb which is an abbreviation for the Arts Council of Great Britain, now replaced by ACE, ACW, and SAC. ACGI is the abbreviation for Associate of the City and Guilds Institute. Uh, ACH, like AC, uh, interjections, same as AUK. That's bizarre. Here, wait, I want to see what AUK is. What are they talking about? Be very gentle. 
No, 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 too far, too far. Where would it be? Auk. The interjection. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? The hell? Okay, wait. Or, oh. Is that what it, what? Oh, I guess so. Okay, it would be like, oh. It's an interjection uh, expressing impatience or contemptuous dismissal. Uh, like, pasha or tut in, Sco in, uh, in its Scottish. Pasha or toot? Tut? I don't know what tut is. Uh, in Ireland and part of Scotland, expressing regret. So, ugh. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. Now, onward. Now we have a kian, um, which is an adjective meaning, uh, uh, which is for belonging to Achaia. Achaia? In the Peloponnese or to Greece generally. Is it Achaia? It's also a noun. I wouldn't know how to pronounce that. It doesn't have the thing. But, Ake... No, it would be... Ake... Yeah, Ake... Akea. Yeah, I think so. Anyways. Then we have the noun Akar, or... No, Achar. Which means a spicy pickle made primarily from mango, used in Indian cooking. Uh, the etymology is from the Hindi Akar, uh, from Persian. Oh, Hindi Akar from Persian. Achar. I see. A spicy pickle made primarily from mango. Achar. I wonder what an achar looks like. I wanna see. Achar. Oh, wait a minute. Have I? No, I don't think I've had this. No, yeah, I haven't had, wait. No, I think I have. I think Manju gave it to me. Yeah, no, I've had this. Yes. I had it once. Yeah. Oh, we did have that. Oh, you're right. You're right, you're right. And I think I said the same thing <laughs> when I was there. I was like, I think this is the thing that Manju gave me. But, yeah. This is so good. That's so cool. Wait, what? I hated it? Then what am I thinking of? Because I remember having something that looked a lot like this, and I loved it. And I'm pretty sure Manju gave it to me, like, in a little, like, in a little cup. I have it on good authority that you and your partner had it together. <laughs> I don't remember... Oh, what the... Automot. Wait, what? Held a message for reason? What the hell? Identity? What is this? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Hold on. What is that? The hell is happening? I mean, I'll allow it. What? Coolped? Cool JPEG added that's Indian as a permitted term on Automod. What? What is... What is Twitch on about? Jeff? The fuck? <laughs> the hell? Jeff? <laughs> Jeff's in the chat. That's Indian is not allowed? What the hell? Do they think it's like... What? I mean, I can see, I get... Oh, I don't know. That's fucking weird. Like, that, is that like... I mean, I can see... That's gay, that's Indian. <laughs> what the hell? You can't say that's gay without getting... Jeff's banhammer? What the hell? That's so bizarre. <laughs> And it's weird because you didn't even say that's any. You said that's South Indian. Like, what kind of, like, derogatory term is that? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. I didn't even know there was an auto mod. What the hell is that? I didn't even know that. But, anyways. Um, let's see. 
let's move on from the auto mod and from Jeff. We have uh, we ended up on a char, and then now we have uh, a char, a charne, a charne, which is a French adjective, especially of battles, meaning furious or desperate. And then there's an uh, idiom that is avec a charname, a charnama, a charnama. <laughs> Which means obstinately, furiously, rancorously, or with gusto. Avec Arshana Ma. Is that Ma? Is that right? Ma. Let me see. What would the spell it? It's a. Uh, I mean, it looks like a Sharna Mint. But the, the IPA is being a little suspicious. What would, what would it be? Uh, I don't know. What? Oh, that's so... Okay, I'm permitting it now. That's so weird. Asharna Mon? Mon. Asharna Mon. That's weird that the IPA... Because the IPA just has... M-A, but like... With tilde. Or what would that be? Charnamont. I see. It's one of those French things. I see. <laughs> Interesting. Avec a Charnamont. Nice. Obstinately, furiously, rancorously, or with gusto. Yeah. Then we have the noun uh, Ashar Asharya, which is a Hindu teacher or learned man. And then there's the noun uh, akat, akadis, a, or akat, akadis, yeah, akadis, which is an intimate and trusty comrade. Oh, from Aeneas's friend in Virgil's Aeneid. Oh, interesting. The idiom uh, fetus, fetus akadis, fetus akadis, from the Latin faithful akadis, a close and reliable friend. Fetus Akadis. Nice. I like that. Fetus Akadis. Wait, I need to center it again. All right. Then let's see. We have ache, which is a noun for a persistent, dull pain. The intransitive verb form is to be in or be the site of persistent, dull pain. To long for. The verb was properly ache, like A-K-E. The noun ache as in speak and speech, from Old English akan, uh, which is a verb, and ace, or ache. Ache? I don't know what that would be, but it's also a noun. Then there's the, the noun achage, from Tennyson? I don't know what Tennyson is. And aching, uh, which is a noun and adjective. The adverb achingly, and achy, which is an adjective. Um... What's Tennyson? I don't even know what Tennyson is. Um, he was a British poet. Huh, I've never heard of this guy. First Baron Tennyson. From Somersby, United Kingdom. Some quotes include, I hold it true, let's ever befall. I feel it when I sorrow most. Tis better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Whoa. He created that. That's crazy. <laughs> to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Theirs is not to make reply. Theirs is not to reason why. Theirs is but to do and die. Huh. This guy sounds interesting. <laughs> I'm like I'm I'm liking what he's saying. <laughs> You're gonna double barrel me Asher and I's stream. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell Asher I say hello. Tell him I'm waving hello. But yeah. Um where were we now? Oh, ache in the Shakespearean sense is same as H, and I don't know what that is. But I feel like it's close enough to where uh, I should I should look it up. I want to see. 
H. H. Holy shit. There's a huge definition for air that we'll get to in like two weeks, it seems like. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, but where's H? H is a noun for the eighth letter of the modern English alphabet. Wait, the hell? H or H? <laughs> and an idiom is drops drop one's H's to fail to pronounce initial H's on words. So there's a freaking like. I just throws out a smiling peace sign and says, "Hey, what's up, Jake? Hello, hello. I hope the stream's going well." I, I'll drop in sometimes. Also, had the genius idea to mix the stream so that you were in my left ear and Asher was in my right. <laughs> That's such a good idea. Can you even do that? Can Volume Mixer, like, do that? I'm sure it can. That sounds insane. <laughs> I know, these are spoilers, but... That's pretty freaking good. I kind of want to save that. H. It's like this. H. So I guess you call an H, like literally like an like an H or H as, oh wait, sorry, that was supposed to be a, oh, I could have done it the other way. Like an H or H is made, like, the article of an H is, is H. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Anyways. Enough spoilers. I'm sorry for the spoilers. But we'll continue. We have uh, Akeem. Or uh, Akinium or Akinium. Which is a noun for a dry, indehiscent, indehiscent, one-seeded fruit formed of one carpal. No more spoilers. Okay, but... I kind of like them. I kind of want, like... When they call for it, like, I don't know what a frickin' H is. Like, if that's in the definition of something, like, how am I supposed to... How are we supposed to learn if we don't frickin' know what an H is? I think that that's, like, what calls for a spoiler. You know? It's in my own tags. Oh, that's... You're right. I forgot I put those in my tags. It's called delayed gratification. You're right. I mean, that's the reason why I'm doing... I chose to go with the route for just barging through a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y and z right but just a little a little spoiler as a treat every once in a while it's not a big deal i don't know maybe that's just me maybe one thing i could do is i could look up the spoiler like the spoiler words you're just gonna eventually have stuff dovetail into place yeah, and we're gonna have foreshadowing and callbacks. I know. I hope there's... <laughs> I hope something like that develops. That'd be so fun. Like, because... Okay, you're right. Because it's like... That could be a build-up. It's like, I don't know what an H is, but that could be the build-up over like two weeks and suddenly we get to H. It's like, oh my god, we finally found H. The narrative arc of the dictionary is sacred and complete. I agree. Okay, this is the last time I'm gonna... I'll, you're right. I need to not spoil. This is the last... This is the last spoiler I'll do. But, yeah. Oh, shit. I'm about to run into the bookworm. Oh, I don't know where to put him. Where could I put him? <laughs> I mean, I could just... I could just do this. That seems a little weird. In the coffee cup? <gasps> You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Okay, let me see if I can get him in there. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I'm, I'm beating bushes. Small so that it auto-scrolls. Yeah! And then, oh, and then I could make it bigger... In the actual stream that's true but i do want to see i want to see if he can get in the only thing like i don't know like what could i do i can i change the canvas size of these like 
Whoa, I could speed him up. Oh my god. He blunk really fast. <laughs> yeah, he deserves the coffee cup. I'm just trying to figure out how to get him in there so that he's... I mean, I may have to just, like, Photoshop it. Because it needs to, like, match the speed of the coffee cup. And the, the dimensions as well. But let me see. If I add scrolling... Scroll... And I do... You know... Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, you know what I could do? Here, wait. So not five. Five is like a smidge too fast. Or is that perfect? No, it's kind of a smidge too fast. Or wait, no, no, no. I think I have it at... Wait, what am I doing? I can just look at this. Hold the phone. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, that's at three. Oh. Okay, that's spot on. That's freaking spot on. <laughs> okay. Okay, but... Um, oh, limit width. Okay, let me see. So, I can make it... No, 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 no. That was bad. That was a bad idea. I should do it like... Um... <laughs> what are the dimensions of this? Hold on. The dimensions of the coffee... Wait a minute. No, it's too slow. Wait, what the... There's some, like, parallax shit happening. Hold on. Uh... Uh, oh man, this is gonna be a little bit of an operation, isn't it? Let me see, let me see. I have to go inside of this thing, and I have to look for that, and what are the dimensions of this? One twenty-eight by one twenty-eight, okay. Oh, but I probably changed the size of it too. Damn! Okay, wait. You know what, I'm, I just need to eyeball it. I don't know why I'm flipping out uh let's say 500 no too big 200 close wait that actually might be it oh that's it that's literally it okay okay um okay but then this should be like four or something no Five. I think it's gotta be five. It's gotta be five. But I need to, like... How's it gonna sync up? How will he sync up? Oh, wait, loop. Okay, but see, I wanna... I wanna get them... Ah, oh, man. <laughs> uh... So just the bug like a zit. <laughs> I wanna... Gah. Um... Shucks. Okay, wait. Um... Loop. Restart playback when source becomes active. Show nothing when playback ends. Speed. No, none of that. Ah oh, man. Well, he's kind of... He's kind of fucked right now. He's kind of trapped in a bunch of places, but... We'll keep him there for now. Wait, is he going too fast? Still? Wait, is he going too fast? It's a very careful, delicate operation... <laughs> okay, anyways. We'll leave him like that for now. I gotta figure out a way to get him all set up. Oh, you know what? Okay, here's what I can do. Oh, your chicken wings are ready. Please munch. Please feast. Enjoy your feast. 
See ya, man. I'll see ya, Gray. Take it easy. Enjoy your chicken. Let me see. What do I do? What do I do? Okay. I think it's just... I don't, need, I don't even think I need that. I would just need to make them big. The size of this, exactly. And then I would make this three. Three. Is that too fast? That's also too fast. What the frick? What's happening? What am I doing wrong? I guess it is kind of a relative thing. Okay, that's too slow. So two. Oh, okay. There he goes. Maybe that's just all we needed. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to leave him like this, but I think I have some ideas. Because we do have to get back to the, to the dictionary. But, yeah. That was a good aside. That's such a good suggestion. Yes, me. <laughs> it's pretty good. I think, he, I think he's in sync with it. I think that's his coffee. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Anyways, we continue. And probably at the end of this page, I'm going to get more coffee. And I'll probably grab a banana or something and feast on some of that. He do be in that coffee, though. It's true. Um, let's see, where were we? Oh, we were at H. Okay, that's right. Or Ake. And I'm talking about H. And we did a Kini. Um... So, indehiscent. Okay, so in that case, should we make a... I think at some point we should make a list for, like, anticipated words. And I think I, I should just do that now. So, indehiscent. Right? Yeah, indehiscent. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. Okay. Then we have... Um, oh, no, we're still on that. So, uh, akin and akinium or akinium is a noun for a dry and dehiscent one-seeded fruit uh, formed of one carpal, the seed separate from the fruit wall, as in the buttercup. And then there's a, uh, akinocarp, which is a noun for any dry and dehiscent fruit, especially an akin, a cheem. <laughs> it is a cheem. And I think that's it. Oh no, there's the uh, the de the derivation akinial, a cheemial, which is an adjective. And we have the noun uh, akernar, akernar, akernar. That's what it is. Uh, which is a noun for a first magnitude star in the constellation Eridanus. Huh. And there's Acheron, which is a Greek myth, which is a noun for one of the... From Greek myth, which is a noun for one of the rivers of Hades, Acheron. And there's the adjective Acherontic, which is an adjective for uh, gloomy, dark, or forbidding. Then there's the compound word Acherontis pabulum, which is a Latin noun meaning of a bad person, food for Acheron. Whoa. I do like Acherontic. I want to put down Acherontic. Acherontic. I like that. Um, and that leads us to... What is this? Oh, it's an adjective. Okay, so uh, Acheulean means belonging to an early Paleolithic culture above the Chelan and below the Maus Mausterian. St. Achul near Amiens, France, where implements of this period are found in river deposits. Whoa. Then there's the French adverb, a cheval, which is of a bet, laid on two adjacent numbers or cards, literally on horseback. Whoa. Laid on two adjacent numbers or cards. A cheval. That's so cool. I like that. Um, 
Then we have achieve and the obsolete spelling <laughs> at achieve at cheem. Um, and it's a transitive verb meaning to bring to a successful outcome, to perform, to accomplish, to win, or to end in the obsolete form. Um, some derivations, the adjective achievable, the noun achievement, meaning achieving, something achieved, an exploit, an astuchion, or armorial shield, or astuchion, astuchion, or armorial shield, granted in memory of some achievement, heraldry. Escuchion, armor. Escuch Escuchion, Escuchion? Armor, etc., hung over a tomb, a hatchment, and the noun achiever. The compound word achievement age is a noun meaning the level of an individual's educational achievement as a determined as determined by comparing his or her blah, 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 by comparing his or her score and a test with the average score of others of the same age. Achievement quotient is a noun for the ratio of achievement age to chronological age, usually usually uh usually by 10, by 10? Like times 10? Usually times 10? No, I don't know. But there was something that fascinated me here. Where was it? Um Oh, es Escuchion. I should put that here. Escuchion. Nice. And then there's a... Uh, has he... Maybe he's going a little too fast. And, okay, anyways. Um, we have Achillea, which is a noun for a plant of the Yarrow genus, uh, Achillea, of perennial plants, family Compositae. Then we have Achillean, which is an adjective for, like Achilles, the great Greek hero in the Trojan War, invulnerable except in the heel, by which his mother held him when she dipped him in the river Styx. The compound words Achilles' heel or heel of Achilles is a noun for a person's weaker, most vulnerable point. The noun Achilles' tendon means the attachment of the soleus and gastro gastrocnemius muscles of the calf. Of the leg to the heel bone, of the soleus and the gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius. I love that word. Gastrocnemius. <laughs> then there's the noun uh, Achaemenes, or uh, plural Achaemenes. Or it's spelled the same. Achaemenes. Okay, anyways, a plant of the genus Achaemenes of herbaceous perennial plants. Then there's Achitophel, or Ahithophel, or Ahitof Ahithophel, which is a noun for a cautious person in Shakespeare. After Dryden's application to Shaftesbury, an able but unprincipled counselor from King David's counselor who abetted the rebellion of Absalom. A cautious person in Shakespeare. After Dryden's application to Shaftesbury, an able but unprincipled counselor from King David's counselor, who abetted the rebellion of Absalom. Wait, which word do you like? Wait. Achillean or Achaemenes? I missed that. I'm sorry. Whew. But then there's, oh, the gastro word. Oh, gastrocnemius. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like some kind of like, it sounds like a beast. Like the gastrocnemius. <laughs> Anyways, then we have Ochkin, Ochkin, or Ochkin. Ochkin is a noun for a knee length knee length coat with a high collar buttoned all the way down, worn by men in India, from the Hindustani Akan. So I guess it's just Akan, Akan, or Akan. Um, the botanical adjective acclamadius, acclamadius, yeah, yeah, acclamadius, means without perianth. Huh, I have no idea what that means. I want to put that down, though. Perianth. Um, 
Um, without Perianth. Acclimadeus. And then we have the noun um, achondroplasia, achondroplasia, plagia, which is a noun for dwarfism characterized by shortness of the arms and the legs. And then there's achondroplastic, which is an adjective derivation. Huh, I never knew that. Echon achondroplasia. Then there's the adjective um, achromatic, or achromatic, which is of a lens, or would it be achrom? No, I guess it, the IPA says achromatic. It's an adjective meaning of a lens transmitting light without much chromatic aberration or without color. The noun um, achromat means an achromatic lens. The adverb, then there's the adverb achromatically, the noun achromaticity, the noun achromatin, which is the part of a cell nucleus that does not stain with basic dyes. The noun achrom achromatism, achromatism, yeah, chromatism, which is a noun meaning the state of being achromatic. Uh, achromatization or achromatizations is a noun. Uh, achromatize or ice is a transitive verb to make achromatic. Achromato, achromatops, achromatopsia is a noun from the Greek ops, ops I. Total color blindness. Achromatopsia, 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 and then ach achromatous is an adjective meaning having little or no color. Achtung is an interjection for lookout in German. Uh, achy, see under ache. Uh, ACIB is an abbreviation for associate of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. Uh, ASIC. Acyclovir, C under acyclic, acyclic, acyclic. Huh. Whew. Okay, I, maybe should I get more coffee? Because I'm probably going to end in about 15 minutes. So. Hmm. Man, I am getting slower and slower. But I do like, I like talking a bit more, like going more into words and stuff like that, as opposed to just reading words blankly. But no coffee. Okay, yeah. So the next 18 minutes, we're just going through tea. No. No. <laughs> I'm not going to have tea. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I do want to show you Glowworm, though. Where is she? There she is. There's Glowworm. No, the stress tea is so bad. <laughs> I don't want that. She do be worm. She is worming. It's very weird because she was very bunctious before uh, I started. But the moment I started, she just decided to sit and listen to the dictionary. Glorm is going to be glow brain soon enough. But anyways... Now we have, um, let's see. Oh, shit. We have some big ones. We have a secular, which is an, ad my voice lulls her to sleep. I wonder, I don't know. Is that true? Is that true? She was looking at herself now. She just looked at me and looked away. I hate her. But we do have acicular, which is an adjective meaning needle-shaped, slender, and sharp-pointed. Uh, some derivations are the adjectives aciculate or aciculated, meaning marked as if we marked as if with needle scratches. Acicular. From the Latin acicula, diminutive of acus, a noodle. Acicular. Yeah, we all hate glowworm. Then we have acid, which is a noun for a substance with a sour taste. Any of a class of substances which turn vegetable, which turn vegetable blues, e.g. litmus, red, and combine with bases, certain metals, etc., to form salts in chemistry. 
any of a class of substances that dissolve in water with the formation of hydrogen ions in chemistry. Any of a class of substances that can transfer a proton to another substance, etc. in chemistry. Um, something harsh, biting, or sarcastic in figurative language. Um, slang, or LSD for slang. A short form of acid house. See below. Oh, for the derivations. Um, the adjective form of acid means relating to of the nature of or having the properties of an acid in chemistry also means sharp sour of soil having an acid reaction biting keen or uh, biting and keen figurative figuratively uh, some more figurative definitions are ill-natured and morose and containing a large proportion of silica in geology relating to acid house and then there's a bunch of derivations, um, or actually more compound words from it. Um, the adjective acidic, the adverb acidically, the adjective acid acidifiable, the noun acidification, the noun acidifier, the transitive verb acidify, which means to make acid or to convert into, to, into an acid, and the intransitive verb of that meaning to become acid, the noun acid ac acidemeter, Acidimeter, acidimeter is a noun for an apparatus for performing ac acidimetry. Acidimetry is a noun for measurements of the concentration of acids by, tit by titration with a, st with a standard solution of alkali. The noun acidity means the quality of being acid or sour. The extent to which a solution is acid, CPH. The adverb acidly, the noun acidness, the noun acidophil, meaning an acidophilic cell, and acidophilic, which is an adjective meaning of a cell, easily stained with acid dyes, or of microorganisms or plants flourishing in an acidic environment. The medical noun acidosis means the, president with, uh, the presence of acids in the blood beyond normal limits. The transitive verb uh, acidulate means to make slightly acid. The adjective acidulous or acidulant means slightly sour, subacid, of, um, of e.g. mineral waters, containing carbonic acid, caustic or sharp figurative. Acidy is an adjective meaning resembling acid, sharp, bitter. Yes, for sure. I'm glad you could make it, Courtney. Good luck with whatever finals you're working on and stuff, but yeah. Thanks for coming. Take it easy. Stay hydrated. Get some sleep. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'll see you next time. Um, then we go into the compound words, acid drop, which is a noun for a sweet flavored, uh, a sweet flavored with a uh, tartaric acid. The noun acid dye, which is a dye stuff with acid, a dye stuff with acid properties. Acid freak or acid head, are uh, drug slangs for the noun, uh, meaning a person who takes LSD habitually. The noun acid house means sometimes with caps, a youth movement originating in the 1980s, involving large gatherings of people to dance under bright flashing lights to loud repetitive music featuring complex percussion patterns and often associated with the use of certain drugs, especially ecstasy. <laughs> then there's acid house, which is the, it's a phrasal, which is the adjective. Um, the noun acid jazz, which is a form of jazz influenced by acid rock. The noun acid rain, meaning rain or other forms of, precip of precipitation containing sulfur and nitrogen compounds and other pollutants released by the combustion of fossil fuels and industrial processes. The noun acid reflux, meaning the regurgitation of acid from the stomach into the esophagus. The noun acid rock, meaning a type of rock music featuring bizarre electronic and instrumental effects supposedly influenced by or suggestive of the influ of the effects of hallucinogenic drugs. The noun acid salt, meaning a salt in which only part of the replaceable hydrogen is replaced by a metal. The noun acid soil complex, a botanical term for a combination of aluminum and or manganese toxicity with calcium deficiency, which has a detrimental effect on 
calcical calcical plants. The noun acid test means a test for gold by acid, or a searching test, figurative. Then there's the idiom, put the acid on, which is uh, an informal word from Australia and New Zealand, meaning to pressurize a person, to put the acid on. Then we have the noun acid, uh, acidanthera, acidanthera, well, it could also be acidanthera, which is a noun for a plant of the genus uh, Acidanthera of white flowered plants of northeast Africa. Family uh, Iridaceae. Iridaceae. The noun acid, Acidophilus. Acidophilus. Acidoph or no, acid, Acidophilus. Is a noun for a bacterium. Lactobacillus Acidophilus. Used to, to counter intestinal imbalance and in making yogurt. The transitive verb uh, aseriate, 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 I guess, is a transitive verb to turn into steel. And then some derivations are the noun uh, aseriage, which is the covering of a metal plate with a film of iron, and the noun aseriation. Uh, the adjective aciform, meaning needle-shaped. The uh, the abbreviation ACII, meaning associate of the chant of the Chartered Insurance Institute. The botanical adjective acinaciform, meaning scimitar-shaped. Um, ooh, there goes the light. The uh, the noun uh, asinus, the plural uh, the plural being asini meaning one of the small fruits that make up an aggregate fruit, like the raspberry. An aggregate fruit, a pip, a racemos, a racemos gland. Oh, and then that's it. Asinus, that's weird. One of the small fruits that make up an aggregate fruit, like the raspberry, an aggregate fruit. Asinus. Uh, then there's the derivations, the adjective acinaceous, full of pips, berry-like, like a cluster of grapes. The adjective aciniform, berry-like. Uh, Asinus or asinose is the adjective consisting of asini, like a cluster of berries. Pip. Yes. Asinus is a pip, like a pip of raspberry. Um, then there's um, ACIS, which is an abbreviation for the Associate of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, formerly known as the Chartered Institute of Secretaries. Then there's ACAC, -ac, which is an adjective for anti-aircraft or the noun anti-aircraft fire, formerly military signaler's name for the letters AA. Then there's uh, the military slang adverb ac emma, which is anti-meridium, anti before midday. Huh, ac emma. Uh, confer pip emma, formerly signaler's name for the letters AM. Huh. Why would they say that? <laughs> Ac Emma. I do like that though. Ac Emma. As as opposed to anti meridian for AM. Ac Emma. Then there's the slang Ackers, um, which is a plural noun meaning money, and the origin is uncertain. Huh. Ackers. <laughs> I do like that. Ackers. Um, then there's uh, the obsolete transitive verb acna, acno, uh, acno, which is uh, to recognize, to acknowledge, and in the Shakespearean sense, acknown um, means confessedly cognizant. Whoa, that's a very strange word. I do like that acknown. Acknown. Yeah, act known. I like that. Then we have acknowledge, which is a transitive verb uh, to admit a knowledge or awareness of, to admit to or recognize as true, genuine, valid, or one's own. To confess, to express gratitude or thanks. To admit or intimate receipt of. Some derivations are the adjective acknowledgeable, which is capable of being acknowledged or suitable for acknowledgement, 
the adverb acknowledgeably, uh, the noun acknowledgement, which means recognition, admission, confession, thanks, a notification of having received something. There's the abbreviation ACL, meaning anterior uh, cruciate ligament. Um, you have aclinic adjective, or the adjective aclinic, which means without inclination or magnetic dip. There's a compound word, a clinic line, which is a noun for the magnetic equator. I think I've heard that before in Ocean Maths class. A clinic line. Then there's the ACLU, <laughs> the abbreviation for the American Civil Liberties Union. Um, then there's the ACM, which is an abbreviation for Air Chief Marshal. The abbreviation ACMA, meaning Associate of the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, formerly known as the Institute of Cost and Management Accountants. The noun ACME, meaning the top or highest point, the culmination or perfection in the career of anything. The crisis, e.g. of a disease, archaic, is the archaic term. Um, Acmeism is a noun for a movement in Russian poetry, active about 1910 to 1917. The noun acmeist and the noun acmite, a, so a soda pyro pyroxene with whose crystals often show a steep pyramid. Uh, Acme, which is an abbreviation for Associate of the Chartered Management Institute. A now, uh, acne is a noun for a skin disease caused by inflammation of the sebaceous follicles, especially on the face, neck, and shoulders. Uh, perhaps from the Greek acme, a point. Oh, so it comes from acme. That's interesting. And then there's uh, acneed, <laughs> which I really like. I really like acneed as an adjective. Acneed. Um... And then there's acne uh, rosacea, acne rosacea, which is an old noun, meaning a chronic disease of the skin of the nose, cheeks, and forehead, characterized by flushing and redness of the skin, pimples, and pustules, also called rosacea. Huh. Ro rosacea. Rosacea. Huh. Rosacea. Then there's uh, ACNI, like A-C-N-I, which is an abbreviation for Arts Council of Northern Ireland. Rosacea? Oh, you're right, rosacea. Yeah, it says here rosacea. Rosacea. Acne rosacea. A chronic disease of the skin of the nose, cheeks, and forehead, characterized by flushing and redness of the skin, pimples, and pustules. Yeah. Then there's a cock, which is an adverb meaning in a cocked manner, defiantly. Uh, a compound word is a, a cockbill, which is a nautical adverb meaning of an anchor ready for dropping or yards topped up, a sign of mourning, having the end pointing upward. Huh. Fascinating. <laughs> what does that mean, though? Of an anchor ready for dropping or yards topped up. A sign of mourning, like M-O-U. Oh man, he is out of sync, huh? Whoa. Now he's just blocking it. I don't know how to remedy that. Oh man, I don't know what to do with him. I'm gonna have to figure it out. But, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna finish this page and then I'll probably be done. But, yeah. Onward we go. So we have uh, asil as asilomat, 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 asilomate. Oh, asilomate, which is an adjective meaning without a colum. And the noun form is an a coliomate. A or no, asilom asilomate. The hell, asilomate a animal. What is a what is a solum? What is a... Wait, what? Selum? That is such a bizarre word. Selum. <laughs> but it's like this. Selum. An acelomate animal. Um, then we have the noun, the plural noun, uh, asemity, which is an eastern order of monks, 
5 to 6th century, who by alternating choirs kept divine service going on day and night. Asimidi. Asimidi. Then we have the noun uh, Akol. Oh wait, I'm kind of off a little bit, aren't I? Sounds aquatic. Colum? Or Solum? Selum? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, then there's Akol, which is a noun meaning a system of bidding in the game of bridge. Ooh. After Akol, uh, after Akol Road in London, where the system was devised. Huh. A system of bidding in the game of bridge. Huh. I didn't know that. Um, a cold is uh, a Shakespearean adjective meaning chilled. A cold. Uh, this historical noun, uh, Akolathus, Akaluthus, Akaluthus, is a noun uh, for the head of the uh, Varangian guard of the Byzantine emperors. Uh, Akaluthic or Ak Akaluthic is the adjective relating to or associated with an afterimage or sensation following upon the immediate effect of a stimulus. The obsolete noun ac aculathite is an acolyte. And then there's acolyte, which is a noun or obsolete acolyth, meaning a faithful follower, an attendant or assistant, a person in minor orders, next below subdeacon, RC church, uh, Roman Catholic church, a junior, a junior church officer, especially one who bears a candle in a procession. Then there's the French uh, acompte, which is on account in part payment. Then we have the noun aconite, which is any plant of the ranunculaceous ranincula genus acon aconitum, especially wolf's bane or monk's hood, poison obtained from it, or poetic deadly poison in general. Uh, some derivations of the adjective acon aconitic, um, aconitine, uh, which are, which, and that's a noun for a poisonous alkalide obtained from aconite. The idiom winter aconite means an early flowering ranuncu ranunculaceous plant. plant. I want to save that, ranunculaceous. Ranunculaceous. Right? Ranunculaceous, yeah. Then there's the French uh, en, con en contraire cour, which is reluctantly a contraire cour. Uh, then there's acorn registered, <laughs> which is an abbreviation for a, uh, it's an abbreviation, a classification of residential neighborhoods, a type of socioeconomic classification that identifies the area and housing in which people live and can be used for direct mail or market research. Whoa. That's bizarre. I want to look into that, though. That sounds so weird. <laughs> Acorn. Oh, no. Thinks I'm trying to code right now. Okay. <laughs> and then there's acorn, which is a noun for the fruit of the oak. Um, and then there's the adjective acorned and the compound word acorn cup, meaning uh, which is a noun for the woody cup shaped woody cup shaped part of an acorn that holds the nut acorn shell or acorn barnacle is a noun for a sedentary crustacean of the genus balanus the noun acorn worm uh any of various worm-like sea animals and enteropneusts and teropneusts of the hemichordata which have a proboscis and collar somewhat like an acorn in shape the acorn worm nice and of course, oh, the worm is gone. Well, we ended on a worm. We ended on some kind of worm. Whew. But anyways. Nice. We keep getting less and less pages done, but that's okay. I do like where we're going. Um, yes. Now it's kind of getting dark. But thank you guys for coming. So these are the words that we have. I, I do need to make uh, like like little signs for them, like right above, like little titles. Yes, thank you, you guys, for watching. Um, I don't know if I'll be 
uh, around tomorrow to film just because I'm going to be super busy. Um, or not film. Sorry, I'm going to be filming tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll be able to... Um, oh, I... Now that it's going into the... Let me see. No, 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 no. Like that. Nah, now it's too thick. Oh man. Okay, wait. That should be fine. But, um... Yeah. I mean, maybe if I do, it would be like a later night stream. Um, and then Tuesday I should be free. Um, but I am doing like final projects and work and stuff like that, so... I don't know. But, whenever it'll be... Hopefully it'll be around the same time, two or three. Um, and yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for learning with me. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.